Logan is arguably the best X-Men movie yet, liberally borrowing elements from the popular Old Man Logan comics arc. That story was packed with references from the Marvel Universe, and since Fox doesn't have the rights to most of those characters, it might seem safe to assume Logan doesn't have many Easter eggs of its own. But you'd be wrong, bub. Here's a spoiler-filled look at some Logan Easter eggs you totally missed. X-Men number 132 one of Logan's key plot points comes from the old issues of X-Men comics that Laura carries around with her, which supposedly contains a coordinate for the secret mutant haven Eden. One of these issues is 132. While the comic they show is a prop made for the film, the decision to use 132 as the issue number isn't random at all. In the real world, X-Men 132 marks the first appearance of the cyborg Donald Pierce, one of the film's main bad guys, who battled Wolverine in that very issue. So meta! Fat Albert The evil Wolverine clone X-24 isn't in the comics, but he seems to be based on a real character with the slightly less scary name of Albert. Albert was a robotic version of Wolverine built by Donald Pierce as part of a weird plan to kill Wolverine using an android bomb disguised as a little girl. It didn't work, but at least Albert acquitted himself a little better in the movies. Richter, Rebecca, Charlotte, Bobby, Delilah. Just as Laura was created using Wolverine's DNA, so too were her friends apparently created using the DNA of other mutants. One of the kids, for instance, has Iceman's freezing power, while another has Pyro's firepower. Logan also finds in the case files a reference to Christopher Bradley, who appeared in X-Men Origins Wolverine as part of Team X. He was the mutant who could control electricity, just like the kid who electrifies the Jeep at the end. And finally, the leader of the kids, Richter, is a member of X-Force in the comics. Alkali Transigen The evil corporation breeding mutant slaves, Alkali Transigen, got its really awkward name from the comics. The secret facility where Wolverine had the adamantium bonded to his bones by William Stryker was actually located by Akali Lake, which was seen in several previous X-Men movies. The Reavers Alkali Transigen isn't just making mutant slaves. They're also really busy enhancing their private army of human soldiers with mechanical arms, legs, and other cybernetic doodads. At one point in the movie, this gang of cyborg mercenaries is referred to as the Reavers, which is fitting because in the comics, the Reavers are an army of cyborgs financed and commanded by, that's right, Donald Pierce. Knickknacks Considering how eagerly Logan wants to forget his past, he carries an awful lot of mementos. Not only is he toting around Chekhov's adamantium bullet, he also has a samurai sword on the wall of his shack as a nod to his time spent in Japan, and he apparently bought his dog tags in bulk at some point, because he seems to have an endless supply of the things just to stare at. It just wouldn't be a Wolverine movie without him staring at those f dog tags. Greenwood Cemetery At the beginning of the film, Logan is making ends meet as a limo driver. He ends up bringing some random people to a cemetery, where he has his first encounter with Laura. But that's not just any burial ground. Greenwood Cemetery has appeared in Marvel Comics for years, in titles ranging from Fantastic Four to The New Warriors. Patrick Stewart's Childhood Memories During a key bonding scene in which Professor X and Laura watch the classic 1953 western Shane, Xavier tells her he saw the movie in the Isoldo cinema when he was just a little kid himself. That may have actually been a true story, because Isoldo was a chain of theatres that operated in northern England during the 1940s and 1950s when Patrick Stewart was growing up. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.